there's something happening with Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren's popularity is gaining in the polls nationally. In a field full of candidates, she's the one with a plan for everything. I got a plan for that. I got a plan. I've got a plan for that. But does she have a plan to win in the places that made Donald Trump president? We're at risk in 2020, and Donald Trump puts us squarely in trouble. Live from Fort Wayne, Indiana, in the heart of Trump country, and all in 2020 candidate town hall. I'm Elizabeth Warren. I'm running for president of the United States, and I got a plan for you. Here now, Chris Hayes. Good evening from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm Chris Hayes. Thank you all for being with me here at Rudy's Bergstaff Place. The address here appropriately enough, is 2020 East Washington Boulevard. It's a former brewery and a bottling plant back all the way back to 1903. It's our venue tonight and for a very special town hall event. We are in the heart of the industrial Midwest here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's a city that's seen its fortunes rise and fall over the past century in a state that helped power Donald Trump to victory in 2016 amid his promises of protecting jobs and keeping factories open. Now, a lot of people talk about how the Trump base is the Trump base and no one's ever going to defect from Donald Trump ever. But when you go back to 2016, you look at those 77,000 votes across three key states. When you look at the overperformance Donald Trump had in states like Indiana and Ohio and those swing states he narrowly eked out. The question is, are some of those voters up for play? And what would it look like if they were willing to listen or vote for another candidate? It's the reason I think that Elizabeth Warren wants to co-op some of the central economic rhetoric of Donald Trump. Donald Trump came to places like Fort Wayne and all through the industrial Midwest and said, I'm going to be your protector and fighter to keep jobs here. Well, just in the last day in a swing through the industrial Midwest, Elizabeth Warren has unveiled yet another new plan. This one geared towards what she calls economic patriotism, an attempt to kind of recast some of the Trumpian appeals to people's material interests in many of the places of the country that have seen manufacturing go away and economic stagnation set in. And with that, I'd like to introduce tonight's guest, Senator Elizabeth Warren. to see you. Well, the, the, the folks in this room obviously are very excited to see you. Well, and uh, I'm very excited to see uh, all of them. So here's, so here's a question that I got yeah. from a bunch of people. We went back and forth to your people. We said, where, where would you like to do a town hall? We'd like to do a town hall with you. And you guys said Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yep. Why, <laughs> why, why are we in Fort Wayne, Indiana? We're in Fort Wayne, Indiana because people in Indiana understand jobs. They understand how you build an economy that doesn't just work for a thin slice at the top, but an economy that works for everyone. But people in Fort Wayne, Indiana also understand that leaving it to a handful of giant multinational corporations to build our economy just didn't work. You know, those big corporations, they don't have any loyalty to America. They don't have any loyalty to American workers. They have loyalty to exactly one thing, and that is their own profits. And what we've got to do is we've got to have a government that doesn't say, hey, whatever it is that the giant multinational corporations want, let us help you. We got to have a government that says we need this economy, we need this country to work for working people, and that's what we're going to do. So, there's, a, there's an interesting sort of message and messenger question here, uh -huh. right? So, you know, I think that uh, that's a very, that's, an, that's a message I think that has some real appeal in places like this across the industrial Midwest. I think there are people that think, that see you and say, oh, that's, uh, Elizabeth Warren is a, is a Harvard law professor. <laughs> She's a, she's a liberal from Massachusetts, uh -huh. and even if I like her, like, is that, are people going to listen to that? Are, they, are you the messenger who can talk to the folks that are experiencing that in places like Fort Wayne and beyond? So, look, this is the 20th state I've come to to do a town hall, 20 states plus Puerto Rico. Um, I've done 90 plus town halls now, and it's about being out and talking to people. You know, keep in mind. I was born and raised in Oklahoma. 
Uh, I have three much older brothers. I was that late in life baby, always referred to as the surprise. <laughs> All three of my brothers went off and joined the military. My oldest brother was career military. He spent about five and a half years in combat in Vietnam, off and on. We were lucky to get him back home. Uh, my second brother was stationed overseas. My third trained as a combat medic. Me, I had a different dream. And my dream was to become a public school teacher. Can we hear for America's <laughs> public school teacher? It's all I ever wanted was to be a public school teacher. And by the time I graduated from high school, my family didn't have the money for a college application, much less to send me off to four years of school. And like a whole lot of folks in America, I don't have a real straight line story. You know, mine starts with, uh, I got a scholarship to college, yay! And then at 19, I fell in love. <laughs> I, you know, I did not know this part, of, somehow I read a lot of it, I didn't know this, but you're 19 years old. Yep. You get a national, you're from Oklahoma. Got three brothers who joined the service. You get a national debating scholar. Yay! Right? George Washington. Yep. Very fancy, expensive school. Yep. yep. You Lord go Lord. there and then you're like, I'm out after a year. I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> and got married to the first husband. <laughs> Never good when you have to number them. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and then after I got married, uh, I thought that's it for me. Uh, I got a full time job minimum wage, answering phones. And I thought, okay, it's a good job. It's a life I chose, but it wasn't the dream to teach school. So here it was for me. It happened. I found a commuter college. We we're living in Houston by then or outside Houston. 45 minutes away cost $50 a semester. That was my chance, a four-year diploma. I hung on for dear life. And I became a special needs teacher. I have lived my dream. Yep. Um, a huge part of your story, personally, when you talk about um, your trajectory, which is uh -huh. a really remarkable one, is making a bunch of decisions buffeted against different forces, yeah. right? Can you find childcare? One of those is whether you can control your reproductive freedom, right? Yep. For women that are making decisions about whether they're going to go to school, yep. things like that. Um, there was an interesting thing that happened today that the former Vice President Joe Biden mm -hmm. um, came out and said that he would not support repealing the Hyde Amendment. That is a provision of federal law that bars the federal government from funding abortion services through Medicare, Medicaid, and others. Um, you disagree with that position. Yes, I do. Uh, is Joe Biden wrong? Yes. So why, why is he wrong? Here's how I look at this. I've lived in an America where abortions were illegal. Yeah. And understand this, women still got abortions. Now, some got lucky on what happened and some got really unlucky on what happened. But the bottom line is they were there. And under the Hyde Amendment, under every one of these efforts to try to chip away or to push back or to get rid of Roe versus Wade, understand this. Women of means will still have access to abortions. Who won't will be poor women, will be working women, will be women who can't afford to take off three days from work, will be very young women, will be women who've been raped, will be women who have been molested by someone in their own family. We do not pass laws that take away that freedom from the women who are most vulnerable. I should note, um, in the case of the Hyde Amendment, though, you, this, is, this is not the, the sort of, you know, when you're talking about those laws in Georgia and Alabama, frontal assaults on Roe, this has been law for a while. It's, it's been the law for a while, and, it and it's been wrong for a long time, because it really is. It's just discrimination. So what do you say to someone who says, look, um, I agree with you on substance, but if you look at the polling, right, Americans have all sorts of cross-pressured, muddled views on abortion. There's strong support for keeping Roe v. Wade. Yeah, right? people about don't want three to out of four people want to Absolutely. Do that. But if you say government funding abortion, um, the polling flips the other way, right? I mean, it's not necessarily a majority position. And what do you say if someone says, no, this is the smart political move if you need to win in a general election to support but the Hyde Amendment? This is not about politics. What this is about is about health care, 
about reproductive freedom, about economic freedom, and about equal opportunity for all women. That's what this is really about. So then the final question, I guess, is are there things, right? I mean, it would be amazing to live in a world in which the right policy was always the best politics, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's not the world we live in, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess my question is, are there things where you think substantively that's probably the right thing to do, but 70% of the public doesn't like it? Or uh, that might be a good policy, but that's going to be a very tough sell in Pennsylvania. So, look, the way I see this is this is what leadership is about. You really do work through what you believe is right. And you get out there, and if most of America isn't with you, then you talk about it. And you make the arguments, and you listen, yep. because maybe you don't have it right. But that's the whole point. You start with what you believe is right, and then you get out there and fight for it. I want to... Let me pull the room for a second. By, by applause-o-meter, okay? Oh, you got an I'm going to ask an applause-o-meter. Okay, We're improvising this. an applause-o-meter. Okay. I'm going to ask okay. you if, you're, if your top issue is health care. Applause for health care's top issue. Right. How about jobs in the economy? That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Climate. And what about, a lot of people say this in polling uh, among Democratic primary voters, your number one issue is just beating Donald Trump. <laughs> we're actually going uh, to talk to a few folks who are here from Indiana and in the, in the area around, including a few that voted for Donald Trump, I'm glad. Um, and see what they have to say, what questions they have for you. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Senator Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.